patrolling Kabul's international airport, the Badri 313, a special unit of the Taliban, they don't look like your traditional Taliban fighter. How did the Badris get selected? Yeah. You know, who are they? The most important conditions. Number one, they are Afghans. No one from any other country can be part of that. Number two, they are uh, Muslims, of course. And number three, uh, they are healthy, strong. And of course, the most important is to be a martyrdom seeker. The unit's members have been responsible for some of the deadliest attacks against U.S. and NATO forces and the Afghan National Army during years of conflict. Badri 313 is seen as one of the most elite and hardcore units of the Taliban. Yeah, we can go. We can go. We were given rare access to them at Kabul airport. It is the only part of the capital where it's being deployed, we're told. One of the things that distinguishes the Badri 313 visually from other Taliban fighters is their uniforms, also wearing American accessories like sunglasses, face masks, and night vision goggles. This is also part of a PR change, moving away from the idea of being an insurgency and uh, being a very well-trained official security arm of the state. We meet the airport commander, Mohammed Salem Saad, is in charge of the Badri 313 while it's securing the airport. The airports represent the whole country. It's the most important point to show that our country is functioning as security and flights are operational. So to maintain this, we needed a loyal and well-trained unit. The troops that are stationed here are the suicide unit of the Badri 313. And whenever the security situation becomes more stable, they will go back to their camps and the previous government's police force will come back and maintain the security. The job of Badri 313 is getting started from here, securing the main entrance, the front door, and uh, making a um, safe environment for those who are going through the way in, inside the airport. Because a uh, concern is, uh, yeah. is car bombs. Yeah, of course, such, such kind of concern, uh, it still exists and we cannot ignore that, that uh, professionally we are to, to what's going on here. You see here, they are checking the people who are uh, getting inside. Just the drivers being checked here, other people are checked inside. Inside there is a body check. There remains mistrust between the people and the Taliban. For many Afghans, years of conflict are not easy to forget. Our message to our countrymen is don't fear the Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan. The 20-year fight was to defend your rights. We are not your enemies. We are your friends. We will secure your life and your belongings. On the streets of the capital, we want to get a sense of how people see them. Security is better than before, but work and the economy are in a very bad state. I'm asking the world, why have they blocked Afghanistan's money? It's not the Taliban's or ISIL's, it's the money of the Afghans. They need to release it. They say they'll ensure our security, but they can't, because there's no work, no jobs, people are exhausted. They can't ensure security like this. It is one thing to talk about change, to give assurances that things will be different from the past. But after decades of conflict, it will take time for trust between Afghans to be rebuilt.